What a question. Uh, before the movies, there were very few opportunities in human history to see human beings massive. There was the Sphinx in Egypt, Mount Rushmore in America, there were colossal sculptures in Greece and Rome, but most of the time human beings did not see their own species massive. And then the movies came along in the 1890s and we could see faces 10 meters tall. If someone blinked like this, the blink would be three feet. When Elizabeth Taylor cried, the tear would fall down maybe three meters. This was incredible. This was suddenly we were seeing ourselves as giants, as colossus, as myths, and that's why we're so fascinated by it. Whether Hollywood will survive as a business model, I don't know. That's not my bailiwick. I don't know about business and all that stuff. But what I can say is, the, what is the idea of Hollywood? The, ho the idea of Hollywood is a kind of shiny thing, a sheen, a kind of utopian view of the world. There's a kind of optimism in the best of Hollywood. And I think, as human beings, we are hardwired to dream, to see an optimism in things, to try and, and at least we long for what you could call a paradise. We have this phrase, paradise lost. And so I think that Hollywood at its best is sort of also yearning for a kind of paradise, uh, a sheen, the sheen of life. And therefore, I think that idea of looking at, at that kind of luster in human life will always remain. Daffy Duck. I've never understood why people see the films of Stanley Kubrick as cold. I think they're incredibly passionate. You can see the passion in the precision in what he does, the exact beautiful framing. Maybe, maybe by cold people mean precise, but, that, but I think that's a completely wrong way of, th of seeing it. Think of the ending of 2001 A Space Odyssey, that incredible vision of a kind of trance-like future where, there, you know, where, where life expands in an apocalyptic sense and then we see a child. What, what an incredible passion there is there. I think that uh, Kubrick has incredible feeling for form, a rigor. You can feel his brain working. Not cold at all. When I was a child, I saw the film The Exorcist far too young, and I had nightmares probably for a couple of years, and I regretted, I seriously regretted it, uh, seeing it so young. When you're a film student, you're studying something, you're learn about it, learning about it. When you're a critic, you're trying to make art. You're not still responding to, to films, although that's part of the job. If you're a critic, then you have to realize that if, whether you're writing or speaking to a camera or whatever, you have to be as creative as possible. You have to aim to make art. So your job in this transition is from studying to being as creative and innovative as you can possibly be. Uh, I grew up working class background in Belfast in Northern Ireland. Uh, there were no educated people in the family. Uh, there was no big connection with film culture anywhere. anywhere. Uh, but I, at school, I was a bit of a brain box. I was um, very good at a weird combination of maths and physics on the one hand and arty stuff on the other. My A-levels were maths, further maths, chemistry, physics and art. So I had a sort of weird science arty thing going on. Then I went to university and I studied um, film history and art history and a wee bit of philosophy in there. And I was never interested in the tech, the I don't know, the camera, as it were, the buttons, or this camera that's filming me now, there are lots of buttons on it. I was never interested in that, but I was really interested in ideas. I would be writing ideas for films, etc. And one day when I was in my early 20s and 
I think I was signing on the dole, I can't remember. I was certainly struggling. I r had an idea. I wrote it on a napkin because I was in a cafe. I sent the napkin to Channel 4 television and they commissioned the napkin. So that's how I got into this weird business in which I am now. Thank you for watching uh, the story of film. It was, even though it's 15 and a half hours long, I still had to leave out loads. You'll have noticed that there's no Preston Sturgis. There's no Eric Romer in it. There's no Sam Fuller in it. Uh, there, there are, I think, I come from Ireland, and yet there's no Neil Jordan, Ireland's greatest filmmaker in there. There's very little about Greek cinema in there, which I regret. There's no Kazakh cinema, and I love Kazakh cinema. So there's lots that I had to leave out, but I knew the, the final idea was that we wanted to make something that was just about watchable over a weekend. So if you started on Friday night and watched like six hours a day by Monday morning, you would have seen the history of the movies. So that's why it couldn't be any longer than about 15 and a half hours. The first memory I have of my childhood is standing on the landing in our house in Belfast and it was a big old rickety house and upstairs there were attics and I remember standing thinking my parents are there and that's the safe place but there's something up in the attic that's scary so I remember being scared by the house. I think social change has made a great difference to film culture but in not perhaps in the way that the question, question implies. I think how we watch films has changed profoundly. I can watch a film on my phone, I can watch a film in bed at night, etc. So movie watching, our relationship with the screen has changed profoundly. But the actual art of cinema, the nature of the movies, I don't think has changed and, and social change hasn't made such a big difference. Movies are this fascinating, bizarre, weird combination of reality and dream and that's the way they started and that's the way they have continued. One crucial thing which is really good is that because the equipment now is so small uh, they, I can make a film and I often do make a film with a camera that size. It means that everyone can make a movie. Beforehand movies were an autocratic art. They were done from on high to us and now movies it, are a democratic art, they are done by us. That's a radical change and that's very good.